I'm on a mission, a mission to complete the mega drop and stack the most ridiculous berms I've ever built. And these turns will serve as the run out for this massive drop I've just built. The trail just keeps getting more intense. In the last video, I got super close to making the mega drop rideable here. As you can see behind me, we have what looks like a rideable landing. When you're here in person, it's not quite rideable yet. We still have these like pretty high spots that I can't get lower just because there's massive boulders underneath. I'm gonna have to keep elevating everything to have a nice steep transition. And that means there's still quite a bit more dirt to throw on that landing. And I also want a lot of dirt in this bottom kind of corner right where I'm standing where it transitions from landing zone to corner because I just want a nice, gradual, smooth run out. It's gonna be an insane pocket corner here. So this is gonna catch you really nice, like a giant clamshell, super steep. That's my vision for it. And then you'll have a, the same sort of turn going the opposite direction down in towards the gully. So it's gonna be intense, it's gonna be wild, and it's gonna be quite the mission still. But the goal for this video is for you to see that all come to life it's gonna be a grind and I'm stoked. So let's watch this trail magically get built. Let's kick off the build lapses.
This is a monumental moment. The mega drop here is ready. Just enough to test. I roughed in the run in and run out and worked a few little things today to get it ready to go. If you look at the run in here, it's not the greatest, but I just worked the final touches today to mellow out the compression for this takeoff. Before you had a bit of a dip here, I'm gonna go slightly uphill. And because I'm not working with the steepest landing, I wanted to really make it a more mellow impact. So I have a nice gradual, slightly downhill takeoff, filled in that mellow compression there to basically have no compression at all. That kind of minimizes the technicality of this massive drop here a little bit and will make it go a little smoother, I think. I'm gonna have to really speed check, so maybe it is a good thing that I have it pretty rough here. But at the same time, like, I don't really know what the best speed's gonna be. It's, pretty, uh, it's a pretty tough one to judge. I haven't hit something this big in a long time. And honestly, anything I've hit that's like 20 feet vertical or more in my past has been either like completely straight or a bit of a step down, or so it's like got a bit of an uphill curve to it. And that is typically pretty nice because you can go a bit slower. This is more of a speed drop. So hopefully it's really smooth. The landing, although it looks pretty long, I'll give you some context here. So here's the landing from the drone angle with me standing about three quarters of the way down it. Pretty massive pile of dirt. Here's another angle to look at for context. Yeah, pretty massive pile of dirt. The thing is though, it's actually not that long when you're going off something this big and that fast, but it's the biggest I could have made it by hand with the space I was given. Let's get down there and take a close look at the run out here. Take off right there, all the way down to the landing here. So when you're looking at it from the side here, it's definitely uh, pretty intimidating. It gives you a good sense of how big it is. And I've had so many opportunities while building. Well, that was kind of a risky jump there, <laughs> right at the edge of this steep dig pit. But I've had plenty of opportunities here to look at this. And any time I'm on the side bottom, I really feel the scale of it and how big this is. And then I stand on top of the landing. I look down at this thing. It's not as big as I think, but that is a beautiful shape. It's uh, the perfect angles, really nice distance. I'm worried I'm gonna go a little too fast the first time, land right near the belly of the berm and just kind of like hit a really heavy compression and struggle to hold on. That is the worst case scenario situation. I've run through my head a couple times while I'm out here working on it, but I gotta get those thoughts out of my head and just visualize success and this working perfectly. That is the key to big lines like this that are high risk. You just can't think of any bad scenarios. You have to think of the very best case scenario and just run that through your head over and over and hope that's what happens. Uh, yeah, when I look at it from here, the landing actually looks really nice. I mean, the line looks nice everywhere, but it looks like so chill. It looks just like a big drop that I'm gonna pocket into and it's gonna be really smooth. And I didn't bother like packing this massive berm yet because it's so dry. I'm gonna need a little bit of rain here to really shape this up. But what I'm gonna do is embrace the dryness and the softness to act as a speed check for me when I land this. And it'll be a good way to test what I wanna do down here because there's a couple different options for this run out and I haven't decided yet what I wanna do. So option A would be keep building this up here and stay above that big tree root down there and then cut some drainage through here and then make this kind of like a very mellow, long and low shark fin that shoots me down the way of this run out and then I'll have a nice massive berm to the left, taking me a little more outside into the gully below. And then option B would be to just dig everything low down here and then hook into a really tight, big long S berm, which I think would be really rad. And the reason I wanted to do that originally is because if I can stay higher on the hill, I have more gully space to work with and I can get a little more creative with the line below me before I hit the mega step up. So there's a couple options there, but ultimately it comes down to how it flows. It looks like this drop's gonna be a really gnarly impact. Just like, I'm gonna have so much speed. I'm gonna carry so much momentum in this run out that it might be a struggle to hook to my left really tight after hitting this first berm. So I've just left a nice, pretty long, straight, loamy run out that's nice and soft, a nice soft berm and Hopefully my speed control and the run out of this when I'm testing it is 
chill and easy and not as bad as I think. But I'm just playing it safe one step at a time before I get too far ahead of myself with the building. We gotta ride this thing first. So in the next video of the Mega Drop series, you will see me hit this thing. I'm pretty nervous about it, but I'm also pretty confident in my abilities and I know I can ride it, so I just gotta get the speed right. That's all it comes down to. It's gonna be rad. Hopefully in the next few days here, I have some rain and I can hit this thing. I just saw a little more rain to pack down that landing a little more because when I slap packed it and the time lapse is there, it was actually quite dry still. And I'm worried if I hit it right now as is, I'll sink into that landing a little too heavy. I just wanna play it safe and dialed. So that's it for the building portion of the video. The mega drop's ready to go. Let's end off the video with some riding as usual on some really fun trails that I've been hitting this week. Here we go. Whoa. Oh Cool. Boat oh, logged out. And that's a wrap for this week's trail building vlog. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for when I hit this because it's gonna be insane. It's gonna be my scariest day on the bike in a very long time. Okay, thanks again everyone. See you then. Peace out.